Why should somebody consider Cress? Everybody wants to know what's the secret sauce. What I can tell you is it's and that's the biggest thing everybody's been trying to do. What were the top three things that landscapers were scared of from conversion from gas to cordless? I don't want to run out of power. I want to lower my investment, and I want the power and durability that I've had of my gas product. We're solving that issue. How it actually works to, to be able to compete with a, a gas engine. Oh, what a great question. My audience wants to make money. You know, having kind of like a, a full lineup of Crest Commercial, how does that actually save you money? You'll save $2,000. As I came out of gas, I always looked at batteries kind of like a toy. Right. This stuff's not a toy, this stuff's legitimate. The reason Crest is able to be where we are today is simply based on the Now what is that? Welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina, home of the Carolina Panthers, Crest Commercial. <laughs> yes, sir. How are you, Paul? Good. We have Todd here, Chad, and Jerry, and I was just outside um, cutting that grass without the gas, battery-powered equipment nice. here. At, nice. Yeah, thank you. I like it. <laughs> at Crest uh, Commercial. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I know a lot of people are eager to know, who, who's this Crest? You guys have surged onto the scene. So Absolutely. we'll start with you, Todd. Uh, so I'm Todd Zimmerman. Uh, Chad, Jerry, and I are all part of the product team for Crest Commercial. Um, from a Crest standpoint, the brand of Crest has been around from the 1960s. It's a German heritage brand that's known for innovation and cordless product. About five years ago, six years ago, Positech acquired the rights to the Crest brand and the Crest company in general. Um, since then, we've been working on battery technology. So for about 10 years, almost 10 years, we've been working with the university in Canada to truly focus on bringing innovative battery technology to market, right? Investing almost a million dollars every year. About four to five years ago now, the chemist at this University of Waterloo in Canada came back to the owner of our company and said, we think we've got something, right? Everybody in the industry has been doing, trying to do the same thing, and we continue to do the same thing. Everybody wants to push battery innovation forward to get the most out of it. And the best way to do that is lowering the resistance of the cells. The more you can lower the resistance of cells, basically the less heat you have, you keep the battery cooler for a longer period of time, you can get more out of it, right? You can charge it faster, you can get more power, you can get more life cycles. It's kind of the best of everything. So that's what really jump-started Cress into the outdoor power equipment industry is four, five years ago, they came back and said, look, we have a battery now that you can get two times more power out of it. You can get 10 times more life cycles out of it as compared to a typical lithium ion cell, and you can charge it in eight minutes right? So we went, oh, okay, wait a minute. So you're saying we've got a battery that we can do all of this with. Now the challenge is, is what do you do with the product, right? What's the next step that you take knowing that you have a battery that you can get way more out of? Then you go back to the product and go, okay, well, let, let's do something different. Mm -hmm. Typically in product management, and these guys can, can back me up. You yeah, go we got it. Right? This is just the intro. We, yeah, Todd, we, Todd's we, giving it. We, we've got the best of the best, right? Yeah. So when you benchmark product, you go, I want to be the best of this segment. So with more power out of battery, we've said we want to be the best gas product out there just supported by a battery. Wow. So none of our product is benchmarked off of any other cordless product that's in the industry. You're comparing it to gas. We're comparing yeah. it to the best gas product in the segment that we're doing. The best string trimmer, the best chainsaw, the best blower, right? The best mower, all gas. Wow. Because we have a battery technology that can now support that level of performance. Wow, we'll have, we'll hear more from Todd. You can obviously tell he is passionate about this. And Naylor, uh, myself, Alan Hain, we've all tried uh, the Crest commercial, and it noticeably has power. So absolutely, uh, very, very, very impressive. Uh, we'll go next to uh, Jerry. As Todd mentioned, you know, we were going in, it's just replacing gas. Let, let people I'm know Jerry, who you are. Jerry Sandy. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm the product development manager for yeah. Crest. So we were going into the focus, like Todd said, not with battery product, but with gas product, how to replace the gas product. Once we solved the issue of never running out of fuel with the rapidly mm -hmm. charging batteries, that's always been a big problem with battery product, trying to maintain 18, 20, 24 batteries on a crew every day, and then coming back in at night and plugging them all in the charger and going through all that and then loading them back up in the morning, kind of a big hassle. And when you're out of power, you're out of power. So we're never out of power from the battery standpoint. And then we brought the product up to the level of gas power. So, And you've worked in the green industry for a long time around gas powered. So what, what's your perspective, you know, coming from that as a background uh, to this? Yeah, as I came out of gas, I always looked at battery as it's kind of like a toy. 
you know. And then once we started getting into this, we found out, you know, we've got enough power. We can build anything, you know, as strong as the backpack blowers that are used by landscapers, the mowers, trimmers, edgers, anything. Yeah, we've got enough power. You know, we can move leaves on power level four with no issue. And I'm talking deep leaves. I've compared it with, you know, high CC backpack blowers. But then also we've got four power levels that allow you to back it down, use the power level you need for the job you're on, and conserve your battery. Even though, you know, we can charge it in eight minutes if we need to, but we still, you know, have the capabilities of making that battery last as long as possible. You know, you can go out in a day with four batteries instead of 18 or 20. Yeah, and I actually held my phone for eight minutes and, and filmed the time lapse. You put the, the battery on, it was depleted, and that watched it go to 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, all the way up to 100% charge in eight minutes. Rain was skeptical. Rain, Rain's here for, uh, from South Carolina. She was skeptical, too, and she's like, it lived up to the hype. It, it charged in eight minutes. Mm -hmm. very, yeah. very impressive. Well, nice to meet you, Jerry. I think most of my audience... If they're going to be honest, that's what they think. You know, two, three years ago, it was like, Psh, what is this? And very, very skeptical um, is, is the consensus. If you, if you talk mm -hmm. to guys who are yep. out in the field day in and day out, and to hear you say that and then convert to, you know, where you are an ambassador now, that there is power out there, uh, that a battery piece of equipment can compete with a gas-powered piece of equipment. I think that's an impressive testimony knowing your history. Chad, what's going on? Uh, Chad Bishop, uh, Crest Commu uh, Commercial. I'm the senior manager uh, over product development with Jerry. Um, you know, as we talked about it, that is the most important thing. That is what is exciting coming to Crest was solving the solution of no downtime workflow optimization. You know, coming from a battery you know, manufacturer previously, you know, we were forcing, you know, end users and customers to buy multiple batteries. And it's like the great thing about coming to Crest with the, you know, CyberTank technology and the quick charge is we're solving that issue. And so that's what's so exciting about being part of the Crest team. Yeah, well, I want to dive a little bit deeper in that because my audience wants to make money. We talk all the time about profit. How, how do you increase that profit margin as a lawn care business owner? And I want you to go ahead and kind of give your case for how, you know, having kind of like a, a full lineup of Crest Commercial, how does that actually save you money? Like explain it in a mathematical uh, perspective. One thing that, that every manufacturer is, is doing is, is looking at this. What's, what's the ROI of conversion? Um, there's a lot of ways to look at it. Simply from our standpoint, if you look at it from Crest, when you have a gas product, whether it's a chainsaw, a blower, a push mower, a hedge trimmer, a string trimmer, there is maintenance that's required for a gas engine, mm -hmm. right? Between the gas, the oil, the, the carb, the oil filters, the air filters, everything, right? It has to be maintained and replaced. And, oh, by the way, you still have to buy gas at mm -hmm. $4 on average a gallon, right? And you, when you go to the gas station, your team goes in and gets a hot dog, some yep. chips, some Mountain Dew. Yep. It is a time waster. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's not just – it's a – guys milk it. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a half hour at the station. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And so when you, when you start looking at how these guys spend their day, the money that it takes to maintain a gas product and also to buy the gas. So we looked at it as a set, right? When you do one-on-one, -on -one, just I'm going to take a string trimmer and replace a string trimmer with cordless, you're not getting the benefit of the savings out of it. So when you look at it ours, when you buy a set, and when we say a set for us, it's a string trimmer, an edger, a backpack blower, one of our cyber tanks, two of the 4-amp hour batteries, two of the backpack batteries, 11-amp hour that, again, charges in eight minutes, right? A chainsaw, a hedge trimmer. Lawn mower too? Or? And a push mower, yeah, yeah, the 21-inch push mower, the lawn mower, right? So that set, if you buy that now, take every all of those off of your trailer today, gas off, you'll save $2,000, right? Now, that's financing it over five years, so you limit your upfront imbe investment, you pay it off, but we have a six-year, 3,000 life cycle warranty for our batteries. We have a three-year commercial warranty for our product. So not only are we backing it with the best warranty industry, the technology, but we're also saving you money right away, right? And that's what everybody's looking for. They want to be able to make money today so they can spend it the way they want tomorrow, right? From a landscaper business, from the guy using it, they want to be more efficient. They want to, and we talked about cordless a little bit. What we're, yep. So I'm going, to, I'm going to throw it out to these guys. So Chad, Jerry, when, when we started doing the research as a group, what were the top three things that landscapers were scared of from conversion from gas to cordless i'm gonna run out of power yep mm -hmm. right. in the middle of the day and i can't do my job you know basically if the machine's not turning i'm not earning 
That's what it comes down yep. to. So one is power. What else? The front right? cost. Uh, upfront cost. Yep. Right. Oh, and then the capability of the product was another big durability. Issue. Yeah, the yeah. durability to be able to hold up, you know, multiple jobs throughout the day. So right. So that's where Crest looked at it, as we've explained, a little bit differently. So not only are we going to save you money, but we want to take those barriers away from you looking at cordless the way we just described it. Right. Cordless products are out there today. They've been out there for a while. Landscapers haven't taken the opportunity to convert 100%. They may have an item. They may have a handheld blower, but they haven't looked at the complete set yet for the reasons we just mentioned. I don't want to run out of power. I want to lower my investment, and I want the power and durability that I've had of my gas product. Okay, let's go back. Upfront investment. You don't need to buy 25 to 30 batteries. For what we just talked about, you need four to six, right? Depending on how many people you have in your crew. Because you can charge the batteries in 8 or 15 minutes I on your trailer, yeah. right? On your trailer, right? The durability of it, three years on the product, and we, we literally have designed them to be the exact same lifetime as far as use for durability as gas product because we have a battery to support it, right? Um, and then the no downtime is you get back to your cyber pack and your cyber tank. So we built this cyber tank as a DC to DC charger so it can be put on your trailer so it travels with you. So now you've pre-bought all of your fuel. So you don't have to swing by the gas station anymore. You've pre-bought all of your fuel with cordless and the cyber tank with you because you can charge those batteries while you're out at the site. So guy jumps off the two people jump off a truck, go do their maintenance of a, a yard, take their batteries, pop it on, drive to the next one, and it's charged by the time they get there. Then how does the cyber tank get power? So at night, when you pull back in, you plug that cyber tank in to a, a normal outlet, 120 volt outlet, and it takes about three to four hours for it to charge up overnight. So your tank's full again. Your batteries can be charging at the same time. And then we also have a 30 amp charger if you want to do additional batteries that could be sitting there on the side. So a lot of times when I come in with landscapers that were running all battery, it was a half hour fiasco to get all the batteries out of the truck and the trailer get them on all the chargers, sounded like a group of angry bees in the garage. There were so many chargers running. We just pull in, plug in, and it's over. Yeah, that's so good. Now, where can somebody buy this at? Like, where are you at? Independent dealers. Is, yeah. there, is there a map, or how, how can somebody check if, yeah. if you guys so are nearby? If they go to Crest.com, Crest.com has a dealer locator. So you can put your zip code in, and it'll pull up yeah. the closest independent uh, outdoor power equipment dealer. And what year did you start getting into to dealerships here in the USA? today this year okay yeah. right so as so we were talking earlier the the launch of equip into the industry or the launch of crest excuse me into the industry was equipped last year okay yep. right any brand wants to get their and their product out as fast as possible and equip is for the landscape industry is a great way to do that right mm -hmm. it's an incredible show a lot of interest a lot of success a lot of great buzz around it which is what you want to do but then the proof is in the pudding and that's what we're doing right now so we've launched with independent dealers across the country We've got around 400, almost 550 dealers now. We're working. More dealers are coming on board every day, right? They're hearing the buzz. They're trying the products out. They understand the, the success and the profit behind it. And landscapers are starting to get behind it even more. So the other thing that we're doing is we're working with our, dependent deal, our independent dealers, right? And working with them to understand who their top landscapers are. And we're going directly to those landscapers and providing trial periods. Right? Allowing that landscaper to say, well, look, I'm not so sure about cordless. Well, that's all right. Here, try it out. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's overcome those objections. Let's understand what you haven't thought of before or why you're not converting. All we're asking is for a 10-day period, take all of your gas off and put all cordless on and truly give it a trial. And then let us know what you think at the end. Mm -hmm. So we're not only backing it with the durability, the brand, the everything we talked about, the savings, the power, the runtime, the advantage of being able to charge on the go, we're now out there going, try it then. Will right? you guys you don't be at Equip again this year? Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, so yeah. folks can try it. Are you going to be indoor and outdoor? Yes, yes sir. We'll oh, have yes. Both. So, you, so if you guys want to try it for yourself, Louisville, Kentucky, late October, come on out and you can, you know, I'm telling you, this stuff's powerful. Just come try it for yourself. It, it really is neck and neck with gas. So it's very, very impressive what you guys have put together. Looking forward to it. You're gonna be in, you're gonna be in Louisville. Absolutely. I don't think I've missed a year in the last twenty years. How have you seen the show change over the years? Because I know it kind of was starting to dip off. Now it's picking back up as the hottest. 
I th- show in town. I think the biggest change that we're seeing is the onset of the battery market. Mm-hmm. You know, if you'd have been in Louisville 10 years ago, you wouldn't have found a battery operated product. If you did, it was in a small booth about, you know, what, four by four, you know, with a couple of guys standing in it. And now you're really starting to see a lot of the industry there. And one of the key things, you know, that, that Todd mentioned, you know, we can also do the proof there. We had a lot of people challenge us last year that there's no way that battery will charge that fast. Then you can go back to work. It's going to be too hot. So we even had people out there running the battery into the ground, charging it, going back, running into the ground, <laughs> charging it again, then just shaking their head. And I kind of guess you're right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it does, like you said, gives people a chance to try it out and put us to the test. That's fantastic. So when you're at Equip, ask for Jerry. Tell him you heard him on the Green Industry Podcast. <laughs> Todd, you'll be in Louisville? Absolutely, yeah. So we'll chat. So chat. ask for okay. all Okay, everyone you're hearing right now is yeah. going to be in Louisville. All right, what do we got here, Rain? Don't be shy. This is Rain, everybody. Hi. What Say is hi, this? Rain. What is Rain. this? Hi, Rain. This is where we'll be at a Oh, I got you. Is Thank that the booth you. number? Yeah, yeah dy- nice. Dynamite. And you guys had a big old booth last year because everyone's mm-hmm. like, who's Crest? And uh, Caleb Allman made a video, Brett Goodyear, I think um, Blake Albertson, B&B Lawn Care, me, Naylor. Yep. We're all like, who is the new kids on the block? Uh, Equip Boost will be at 1054 and 8020. So I'm assuming. As outside. outside. That's the outside one. Yeah, yep. 1054. And, and their their colors are, are a reddish white, uh, so so you can't miss them. So yeah. uh, dynamite drop in, Rain. <laughs> Can't wait to equip guys. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be awesome this year. I was just talking to Chris Kaiser. He's the uh, president of the OPEI, and he said yeah. that the well, well, last year they had a record attendance, and he said this year they're twenty five percent more uh, sales, oh, that's you great. know, signups than last year. Plus, it's sold out. Like, if you wanted to be a vendor, you couldn't. They don't have any more. You know, it's oh, the awesome. vendor space that's is great. sold out, and the yeah. attendance is twenty five percent ahead of record breaking year last year. So you guys are in the right place to. To market yeah. your product at, at the Equip Expo. Yeah, you can see it in the outdoor booths, especially. You know, I know the inside's filled up, but it used to be only outdoor was only out back. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now it's around the sides, it's across the street, it's everywhere. So the show is really taken off. So when I started being introduced to robotic mowers, you had to actually wire it in, or you, you had you had to do something, yeah. some additional yep. component to operating the unit. But this one, it's basically satellite in, so you have an app. And you guys can explain it way better than me, but this is just me watching it for five minutes. And you take this little pilot thing, and you literally draw the perimeter of where you want it to mow, put that back on the mower, connect it to the app, and it, it will go to work. Yeah, yeah. So the, it, it's weird. From a robotic mower standpoint, or just technology in general, typically the U.S. is one of the quickest adopters of new technology. Well, in this case, Europe was quick, that was faster than the U.S., right? Europe adopted uh, robotic mowers really well, really quickly to where it's almost a 16% market share of all mowers inside of that country, right? When you look at the U.S., robotic mowers is less than half a percent of actual market share penetration. There's one, it's low awareness, right? So we're not going to hide from that piece of it. So robotic mowers has been around for probably 10 to 12 years in the U.S., Mm -hmm. if not longer. People just haven't adopted because of a couple reasons. One, low awareness. Okay, we can take that out of the equation for a second. But two, when you are aware of it, you have to currently have to install a boundary wire into your yard. So it's like an invisible dog fence that has got to be in your yard for the robot to essentially go, oh, don't go there. Mm-hmm. And then it's also a random pattern. Mm-hmm. Well, not pattern, but it's random mowing. In the U.S., we have this perception that we want everything to look perfect, right? We want to have lines and patterns and everything in our yard. Well, introduction of RTK comes along, right? So RTK is using three points. You've got a mower, an antenna, and satellites. Satellites are your positioning Antenna is essentially your single point of reference to say, I know where I am at all the time because that's stationary. Then you've got your robot that works with all those two. So Crest Mission RTK Robots is zero boundary wire installation. There's no more boundary wire at all ever yeah. needed, right? So, okay, well, how do you get the boundary wire? Or how do you put the boundary in? So we're talking about the mapping cart, right? The, yeah, the, the mushroom. Med- the mu- well, so you got the stick on wheels, right, our yeah. mapping cart. Yep. And our little white mushroom, which we call the pilot that's on the robot, you basically take that off, put it onto the mapping cart, and then you literally just walk your yard with that to create your boundary, to create your virtual boundary. Now, as you're doing it on the app, you can actually see your boundary start to be created. You can create no-go zones. You put your charging station in. Once everything's done, you publish it. You take it off of the, the – take the pilot of the mushroom off the mapping cart, put it back onto the robot, let the robot charge, go to the app, create your schedule, and let it go. 
right? Wow. Now, what do you mean, uh, Todd, by create your schedule? So in the app, you have the ability for every day of the week to create when you want it to go out and mow, right? And you can have it mow as long as you want or as little as you want. Now, the unique part is because of RTK, every robot we have, our uh, Crest Mission RTK robot, mows in a pattern. The fun part of, of it now is we actually can change the pattern too, right? So not only do you get perfect stripes in your yard, anytime you go and schedule it, you can also say, I want it to go either north-south East, west, wow. diagonal. Wow. So you can now mow your grass like you typically mow your grass mm-hmm. with a push mower or a Z- ZTR or ride on mower, whatever it is, right? You're now going to walk out and you're going to have the patterns that you are used to seeing. It's just a robotic mower now. The technology is here. It's starting to sell now. All your The dealers that we have are buying, in, or not buying into it, buying them and making it available to now residents. How do as you well. uh, set the height of the turf? Um, for the robot mower, you can go into your app and set the height of the robot. Mm-hmm. And we go from one and a half inches to three and a half inch cut height. Okay. So I live down in Georgia. We have predominantly Bermuda, but we have a little bit of zoysia. Mm-hmm. And so typically we scalp that. I mean, we'll scalp it down to low. Yeah. But but it performs its best at about an inch and a half or one and a half inches, about two inches. Yeah. So you, you could basically... Keep it at about two inches yeah. for the rest of the year by just... Absolutely. Yep. By in the app, just going in and just changing the uh, the cutting height to two inches, two and a half inches. And then whatever. somebody up in Ohio or Minnesota where they got that tall grass, they could they could keep it four and inches? Higher, yeah. yeah. What's but the we, limit? Three and a half three inches. And a, three and a half. Three so, and a half so, yeah. so someone in the Midwest who has that tall fescue and yeah. Kentucky bluegrass and all that, um, they can have it at three and a half. Yeah, they absolutely could. And the nice part is about a robotic mower is it gives you your time back. Mm-hmm. The best part about it is with a robotic mower, it's mowing all the time. So your grass always looks perfect. And it's also healthier for your grass. The more you mow it, mm-hmm. now we're not taking off, you know, three inches at a time. So once it's cut, it's only taking about an eighth of an inch off. But the more you mow it, that eighth of an inch is providing more nutrients into the soil. So you get stronger root growth. So you don't have to water your grass or as much. And the grass becomes thicker, greener, denser. It becomes a healthier lawn the more you mow it. Yeah, you don't have thatch issues, the buildup, because the components that are cut are so small, as Todd mentioned, it's just taken off about a about an eighth of an inch. And he had mentioned patterns, too. As bad as I hate to say it, it mows straighter than I do. I mean, we were out here mowing, and as I could not compete with that robot. The lines wow. were perfect, and I'm not perfect. I'm close, but I'm not as good as the <laughs> robot. <laughs> well, it's such a I, unique tool. It's like you can schedule it at night. If you don't want to see it during the day, you can schedule at night. It doesn't disturb anybody. It's taking care of your lawn. Nobody else sees it. So that's the beauty of it. You can schedule it whenever you want to do it. It maintains your your, your lard, yard, and it's nice and plush, and it looks great. And no noise. And we've got units from half an acre up to nine acres. Yep. Okay. Now, my sister and her husband, they live down uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, they got three kids. They got a dog. How does that work where you have life going on in a backyard or, or, or whatnot? Oh, what a good question. So yeah. robotic mowers have safety built into them. The biggest thing is we have obstacle avoidance. So there's little, like almost two little eyeballs on the front of it that are um, sonar. It's just sending pulses out and saying, is something in front of me? No, keep going. If it is, then stop, right? As it gets closer, it's going to slow down. If it doesn't move, it stops, and then it does a strategy to go around it, mm-hmm. right? The other part, too, is if something were to lift it up, the blades stop. Okay. The blades themselves are called flail blades. It's literally small razor blades that are on a pivot, um, a little axis. And it's designed so if it hits something that has a resistance more than a piece of grass, then it, it goes out of the way. If it hits something that is really tough, then it shuts down. I forgot to take a look at the blades. So how do you sharpen the blades and, and keep those... It, the biggest thing on those is you just replace them. Okay. Right? They're dual-sided razor blades almost. It, mm-hmm. it, it's better to say it's a flail blade, but How it's razor often, blades. How often, Todd, do you replace them? It's going to depend on your thickness of your grass, right? So in my yard, um, I replace them about once a season. Okay. Um, now, if you're using it more and more frequently, your grass is a little bit thicker, once a month, once every other month. Now, how do you prevent a theft, someone just coming and picking it up and, and driving and selling on Facebook Marketplace, like the backpack <laughs> blowers in Atlanta? The, 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 those things get snatched and sold within a day. Oh, wow. Um, so there's nothing we can do to prevent somebody from walking in your yard and just grabbing it. The only way you can do that is chain it down. But what we do have is security built into it. So you have your own personal PIN number. If somebody picks it up and they don't know your PIN, it's not going to operate. You can't do anything with it. The other part that makes it nice 
is it's RTK. Now, I, I hate saying this out loud, but if it's turned on, kind of know where the robot is, right? We know what the location of it is. So if you pick it up and take it, a good chance we'll be able to find where it is. Just thinking ahead, Atlanta's getting rough these days. <laughs> <laughs> but you talked about blade use a little bit, and you know Todd's running one of them at his location. Now, you know, just for informational purposes, as you get closer to the coast, and you know the grass grows, and what's it do? It brings sand up with it, right? There's a little bit of debris in the grass, so you'll have to replace your blades more often if you're coastal. Yeah. Okay, is your target customer for the RTK, a homeowner, or is there ways that, that a commercial landscape company can incorporate these? Oh, what a great question. Our target is residential use. Okay. Okay. Um, however, what we've seen is there's landscapers today that are starting to think of their business a little bit differently. And what I mean by that is if they can install a robot onto a resident's lawn and that robot mow all the time, and when they come back on a weekly basis, all they have to do is trim, edge, or blow. They've saved time on that property, so they can get more properties done. So we're starting to see landscapers actually looking at it as a, as a business opportunity almost, right? To where they're looking at deploying robots onto residents' yard, mm -hmm. however they want to service the fee or whatever. But they're looking at it as a business opportunity for, I won't say labor savings, but we know labor is a challenge everywhere right now. Mm -hmm. But if they can make more money by having a robot mow that grass and have one of their guys come back on a weekly basis just to do the cleanup and they can do more yards per day then potentially they're making more money that day that week that month that year because they have a robot that's helping them out with it do you have just one size or, or do you have multiple um robots and what, what how many inches are they so we have multiple robots we have um the kr 172 173 and 174, they're an eight inch cutting path. The 174 has dual blades. So it's a single blade on the bottom and the stack blade. Okay. So half acre, three quarter acre, acre and a quarter. And then we go up to the KR 233 and the KR 236, 12 inch to 13 and a half inch cutting path. Okay. So those are two blades. So two discs and each disc has six blades on it. So they're stacked. So the 233 can cut up to six acre max and the 236 is nine acre max so when you get into those you're talking about larger properties mm -hmm. or even sports fields right? soccer field yeah so now you're getting yep. into soccer fields baseball fields um, football fields right whatever that is and remember we can also do patterns now right mm -hmm. so those fields don't necessarily need to have random anymore whoever sets those robots up they can mow that field however they want to and you can get down to an inch and a half versus you know two inches so you can get really close to maintain the turf of that field as well and then for the charging station, does it, how does it know when and how to get charged back up? The nice part about the charging station that we have is you can literally put the charging station anywhere. Um, and what I mean by that is if you want it hidden, we could put it underneath this table. There's a magnetic strip that's tied into it. That's the only thing you have to install. That magnetic strip, you basically put that into your mowing area, and it can be 8 feet long, it can be 16 feet long. Once the battery says, I'm at a certain level, it's going to go back, find that magnetic strip, because remember, it knows where it is, so it knows where that charging station is. It'll find that magnetic strip and just follow it back in. Is there anything else you wanted to share, Chad, about the RTK? Well, it's really good. You know, we didn't talk about it with the RTK technologies. Like in the past, you've always had a boundary wire, so it was really an obstacle to get across like sidewalks and driveways. Now with RTK, you just map your pattern, you do your other side and come back. It knows to go across, so you don't need a boundary wire. It's that smart and that intelligent to cross that area, go finish its area of mowing, and then come back. Wow. Yeah, so that's yeah, the beauty of point. it as well. You know, I think people need to get out and get a look at it, especially, you know, when we come to equip and see what kind of lines that thing will lay down. It's straight as so an you, arrow. What, what all equipment will you have it equipped this year? So we'll have all of our RTK, we'll have all of our commercial equipment, um, as well as the accessories, our personal protective equipment will be there, uh, which we didn't have uh, last time. We'll have our 60-volt prosumer, which, mm -hmm. by the way, our 60-volt Crest commercial or 60-volt prosumer, all the batteries are interchangeable. Oh, right. right. So we're not leaving anybody out, out of the system. We'll have our 40-volt residential, so our two-battery system will be there. And we've got something that we're working on that we're hoping to have there, but it may be reviewed a little bit later. Okay. And there's going to be a lot more equipment that yep. you didn't get a chance to see yet. Yeah. But okay. we're just not talking about it yet. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we I got, got you. It's adding on and expanding our offering. So, yeah. yeah. In the commercial product segment, we've got almost 10 new, eight to 10 new products for commercial landscapers that we're going to debut at, at 
uh, nice. equip. Well, make sure you have it on your uh, priority list that equip to uh, stop at the Crest booth. You can't miss them in the, the, the white. That's like a snow white and uh, red. They're going to be outside and they're going to be inside. So uh, definitely tell if you recognize Jerry's voice or Chad or Todd, tell them you heard him on the Green Street podcast. Now, Absolutely. when it comes to technology, do you want to go a little bit deeper on technology of how all this is made? So if we, if we take a step back, right, we started this all off by saying the reason Cress is able to be where we are today is simply based on the battery technology, okay? We all know, corporately we know, if we were to say Cress is here and we have a standard battery like our prosumer version, mm -hmm. you know, 18650 or 2700 lithium-ion cells, and we had product that was kind of equivalent to where cordless is today, nobody would be excited about it. Yeah. We're just a right? me too. We're like everybody else. Right. Yeah. So the reason we're here is because our battery technology and then the, the product itself performs damn well. Yeah, if you look at the product, you know, from Todd's perspective, just follow it from the cutting end right to the motor and battery. You're not going to find anything any different. It's the same type of cutting heads you see on the gas product. It's the same gear heads. It's the same shafts. It's the same drive shafts. It's the same bushings. I mean, there's really no difference. The only thing that changed is the power source. Yep. So when you look at the power source, right, it, it, everybody wants to know what's the secret sauce. To be honest with you, nobody really knows what the secret chemistry is. What I can tell you is it's lithium ion based. That's what we know. All right. Now, lithium ion based, like the slurry, what they call these chemical, the slush that makes up the cells. So you've got a lithium ion base, but there's other chemicals in there that help lower the resistance. And that's the biggest thing everybody's been trying to do, right? You have lithium polymer that's out now, right? Has been out for a while. I won't say out now. It's been out for a while, but that's doing the same thing, right? It's doing the same. It's trying to lower the resistance of the cell so you can get more out of it. The cooler you can keep a cell, the lower temperature you can keep a battery, the more you can get out of it. And that's what the cyber pack and this eight minute cyber system does for landscapers. We've taken that technology, we've lowered the, te the cell temperature, the resistance of that, so we can get more power out of it, we can charge it faster. And one benefit we forgot to mention is that you don't have a cool down period. So on a backpack blower or anything, if you're using even our, our standard lithium ion battery, if you're using it, it's going to be hot, right? Because it's creating heat while you're using it. So when you take it off, doesn't matter who you are right now, that has to cool down to a certain temperature before it'll start to charge. When you use the CyberPak batteries, it doesn't have to cool down, right? Because we're controlling that temperature. So you mm -hmm. can pop it off of a backpack battery, off of a mower, 100% drained, pop it on, it'll start charging right away. So now you've got zero downtime or because you're always on charge. There's no waiting. You're charging either 15 minutes or 8 minutes, depending on how fast you want. Because if 15 minutes isn't fast enough, then we'll put it on 8 for you. Mm -hmm. You're lowering your overall investment because you don't need 30 batteries anymore. You need 4, 5, maybe 6 batteries to get through a day as a landscaper with a cyber tank along with it. So yeah. it's bringing the 8-minute cyber system all together to work with really damn good product. Yeah, longer life cycles. Yeah. So versus 3, your traditional. Yeah, yeah. 3,000 versus 300 on your traditional lithium. So, you know, like we talked about, it's an upfront investment with ours, but you're not buying batteries year over year like your other customers are. And you can go yeah. right to work when it comes off the charger. So it's not getting hot while it's charging either. Right back to work, right back in the charger, right back to work. There's just no downtime. With the cyber tank, what, what do you recommend? I know you guys just had it kind of all the cart there today because you're you set up a little station for me to try out the equipment, yeah. but for somebody who has an open trailer and enclosed trailer, th there's so many different combinations for guys running commercials. Like how, how does that cyber tank incorporate with the different variations of how guys have their setups? Wherever you want it. If you've got an enclosed trailer there, open trailer there, back of your pickup there, we've got it operating in all different scenarios. And we got the cyber cabinet. You can put it in as well. So what we, is, now, what is that? We sell an additional accessory piece called a cyber cabinet that houses the cyber tank, keeps it uh, you know, protected from the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you can lock it and keep it enclosed. They can buy that and put in their trailer, or they can just take the cyber tank themselves and affix it to the trailer, and it stays permanent. Or they can move it in and out. So to you give you a good idea, you, you see these job boxes in the back of trucks that take care of everybody's tools. Yeah. It's like a job box with a flip-up lid, a glass window, everything, and it resides in there. And you bolt it in, or how do you get it to stay in there? Yep, it's bolted in. To okay, so then all you need is basically an extension cord back at your shop or wherever you park the vehicle at the end right. of the night. That's it. Okay. Pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. 
guys that are listening in Atlanta, it's Echo Power Equipment, Steel, uh, Red Max, Husqvarna. Th- these are kind of the the names that guys are if they're building out their lineup. That that's what they're thinking. Why should somebody consider Cress? Well, when you take a look, you know, at our equipment, as we said, you know, we selected these top end gas products to be our benchmarks, basically. We've all worked in this industry before, you know, in the gas side. So we know what the best products are that are out there. So, for example, you know, when we come in and we set up a string trimmer, it's equivalent to your 30cc professional trimmer. It has the same type of drive shafts, the same gear heads, the same trimmer heads, everything. The only thing is, is a power source. Mm -hmm. No different with the edger. Same thing, 30cc, right up there with the biggest and the best of the edgers. So from that perspective, you know, the product's really not that much different when you go to look at it. And, you know, many times, you know, our our products have outcut gas products, even the mowers. You know, we had them in Florida, and people were putting them head-to-head with brand-new gas product right out of the box, and it couldn't compete. And it's because, you know, basically, you know, that mower's set up to be equivalent to a 200cc mower that people are used to using commercially. So a big part of that is, you know, just durability and power. That's the focus. So the product's really not different. It's just the power source that comes into play. Yeah, and it's like we've done a really nice job of giving it the ability for the end user to have, you know, multiple levels of power. So like, you know, most time with gas, you're always, you're fully wide open, and it's like you're just burning through in it. You're loud. You're disruptive to people around you. The beauty of, like, you know, Jerry was talking about the string trimmer, you've got three levels of power. You've got enough power on level one, 4,200 RPMs. You can go all the way up to 5,500 RPMs. So the cutting power, as he talked about, is there. But also we need to train end users as well as how to use the tool. You don't have to be fully wide open. You want to save that battery and have longer run time. So it's like not, it doesn't always have to be wide open. But as Jerry said, everything that he's developed on the commercial side is like it's there. It's got the uh, power equivalent to Husqvarna and steel. So, all right, if if we go through it, right, we've got the KC100, which is our 16 and a half inch string trimmer. 30 cc equivalent. Okay. We've got the KC150, which is our cordless edger. 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 What's the... Blade, 8-inch? Eight 8-inch. Eight inch. Eight eight inch, inch cut, yeah. right? We've got the uh, KC300 chainsaw. That's yeah. a 40cc equivalent, 16-inch yeah. barn chain. What's the yeah, cut speed on? And it's uh, running a 325 low-profile chain, which is what you're going to find in the arborist community on top handle saws and things of that nature. And I believe we're at, what, 21 meters per second? Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of chain per second you know so it, it cuts fast you use it you're not yeah a, jerry you're, a, you're you're not a chainsaw fan at the moment but like, we're gonna get yeah. you there 79 <laughs> shout out to wrigley yeah. tree service in atlanta georgia man Ch- anything tree related chance wrigley handles that for me Jer- jerry had to give me the the tutorial on the <laughs> the chainsaw today how did i do after you after you, you told me you did all right take you what we good. do take take 13 or 14? Uh, maybe I 12? Think, I don't think no, we it wasn't that many. I think we went about six. <laughs> yeah, so. But I think you got a couple of two or we, three. We good might ones have in a there. viral video in there when you when you uh, do the chainsaw coming up and it, it's just spraying towards the camera. That could be satisfying to watch. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, you, did, nice. you did a nice down cut. You had a nice rooster tail I coming out. So you there. did a nice job. Yeah, you did a good job. We'll get you there. We'll get you Thank there. Thank you. Yeah, Rain didn't tell me nothing about chainsaw. <laughs> she sent me a list. She's like, what equipment do you want to try out? And I, I definitely said the backpack blower. Um, uh, full disclosure, I have the Echo PB9010. So that's, you know, that's what I know. And, and, and the blower, um, you guys can watch it on Instagram, did a good job. I said, I want a string trimmer. I want the blade edger. I want the lawnmower. And I want the hedge trimmer. And uh, I didn't say I wanted a chainsaw, but <laughs> we, 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 we don't let anybody try out equipment without running a chainsaw. That's yeah, was, standard rules. I got you. It, it was it was a lot of fun, but but the equipment is. I mean, and then I talked to Naylor Taliaferro about this because uh, he got the equipment too. He's like, dude, a lot of stuff's out there for battery that, like you said, is a toy. Mm-hmm. Right. This stuff's not a toy. This stuff's legitimate. Well, did you have any trouble moving your little? Two and a half bushel clump of grass with the blower. <laughs> no, so so they had a rainstorm here. I didn't I didn't even wear my boots. I just wore tennis shoes, and it is the grass is soaking wet. And uh, you know, I I mowed with the twenty one inch, bagged it, had these big old clumps. I'm talking thick wet grass, and it blew right through it. Yeah, we just dumped the whole two and a half bushels right on the ground and yep. let him go at it, and no so, problem. So the blower we're talking about, the KC five hundred. What yep. are the specs? Uh, Thirty newtons, nine hundred cfm. 
Yeah, 190 miles an hour. Right. How many speeds? Four. So backpack blower, equivalent to what cc for gas? Uh, we're getting into that 65 to 70 cc range. Right. Yeah, it's equivalent to a BR600. I think it's higher. Yeah. It's actually higher. It's yeah, about five what, newtons higher, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, but that's what you know. That's what you see standard in the industry. Most everybody uses a BR six hundred, and this you know can be a BR six hundred. And Chad, I was uh, talking to Rain, who is f- the camera woman uh, for the <laughs> for the blowing session, and I so it's level one, two, three, four. I had it on level four, and I was literally talking to her. Yep. You you couldn't do that with a BR six hundred or a, a ninety ten or a, any any other thing. It's you got your ear protection on and you can't hear nothing, and it makes the customers mad because I had a uh, funny 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 story. That's how I got to serve the Atlanta Falcons is because one of the next door neighbors was the defensive coordinator Atlanta Falcons. I didn't even know that. And um, every Saturday morning we would do his neighbor's yard because this guy lived in California. Rich guy lived in California. And no one lived there. He'd just come there a few times a year to go golfing or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is big, big money. He's the CFO of a company you've heard of. It's big, big money. So we'd do his yard on Saturday morning, and the neighbors apparently would get so mad at us because we'd be out there at 8 a.m., you know, blowing all the leaves. Oh, wow. So one day, Coach Smith's wife came over and just chewed us out. You know, what are you guys doing? It's Saturday morning. And uh, anyway, I went over and I apologized to her and her husband, and then they ended up forgiven us and then they're like you know you did do a great job on an install we did gave them a brand new yard to next door neighbors so they ended up hiring me after they chewed me out really? <laughs> and he was the defensive coordinator Atlanta Falcons so then I ended up doing the head coach captain a bunch of the Atlanta Falcons players oh that's awesome nice. and that's- I got the whole thing because of my my gas power blower however that was like the rarest occasion of all usually that annoys people right. a lot of people are working on zoom now and at home yeah. and when you're out there with the the gas power blower going it's a, it's a nuisance. It's annoying yeah. to people. I'm telling you, this stuff is so quiet that you can literally have a conversation with your blower on full full level. Yeah, yeah. and the backpack blower and gas is a nuisance if it's five houses away. It's so loud. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that, that really helps out a lot. You know, to give an example of that, we were out testing product with a landscaper early in the morning. And we did a person's lawn, mowed, trimmed, blowed, edged, everything, and left and we're doing another lawn. And when they came outside and looked around, they didn't know we had been there. Wow. They came down the street looking for us and asked us if we could come back because they had a special request. They said, we were having coffee. We didn't even know you guys were here. Wow. You know. And I think that's so. a big selling proposition. And you can even, as a, as a business owner, you know, you can offer that service and you can charge more. It's a premium service that when the business person's inside on a Zoom call at 2 in the afternoon – they don't have to worry about you being outside the window with the, you know, yeah. crazy loud blower. Yeah, and what you're seeing across the United States, like Dallas, the city of Dallas, Miami, upstate New York, everybody's starting to ban backpack blowers, gas ones. Because California. Of, yeah, because of the, you know, emissions and the noise ordinances and everything. So it, there, people are starting to really, you know, lock down on it. So it's a good opportunity to really get on the Crest commercial backpack blower. I appreciate it, right? One of the things that, that you brought up, two things that we didn't talk about, noise overall, right? Cordless product is... is going to be a benefit no matter whether you're using the string trimmer an edger a blower a mower over a gas product right you don't have the emissions you don't have the noise right so there's a benefit there so if you take that one step further we all know that there's federal regulations all the way down to local to hoa regulations of being able to not use it right california is is has kicked it off with carb Mm -hmm. not having the ability to sell small engine equipment anymore right that trend is going to follow so landscapers are what we feel. The industry is right at that stage of, I know I have to convert. What's the product and the battery platform that's going to allow me to do my job the way I'm doing it today? Mm-hmm. To lower my investment, to have the runtime, to have the durability, and then who's going to back it up the best, right? You get back to the warranty and things that we've talked about. Three-year warranty on our product. And when you look at our batteries, it's six years or 3,000 life cycles. And the cyber tank itself is six years or 2,000 life cycles. We feel we're providing that all-around solution for landscapers, for professional landscapers with the design, the product, the power, the runtime, and then also taking into account for businesses, right, for someone like yourself. Now, if you have somebody that's running a gas backpack that's had back issues or that's had noise issues, use cordless. You don't have to worry well, about I, it. Well, I had a guy, Todd, one time poured straight gas at a BR600. This was a long time ago. 
I mean, things almost brand new and it ain't working no more. And you don't, you know, you didn't know that 50 to one, we had a gas, a, mi a mixed gas can. We had a gas can for the mowers, right. poured it right into the blower and Goodbye. 600 bucks Goodbye. gone. Yep. Yeah. So with the battery, it's kind of hard to mess it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, how can people again, connect with Chris, uh, if they want to check, you know, if you guys are in the area and, uh, you know, shout out the equip expo again. Absolutely. So the best way to go right now is to crest.com. Um, when you go into crest.com, you can go to dealer locator and find the local independent dealer uh, closest to you. And then again, we're going to be at uh, equip this year for the second year in a row. We'll have 10, 15 new products that we're going to be launching there. So stop by, see us in the indoor booth and try us out at the outdoor booth. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for your time and uh, looking forward. I'll see you all again in Louisville. Absolutely. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. it. Yep.